So I'm just saying I have a few scriptures I wanted to share this morning to start with. Exodus 20, 12. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land of your Lord, your God, who is giving to you. Leviticus 19, 3. Each of you must respect your mother and father, and you must observe my Sabbath. I am the Lord, your God. And Proverbs 31, 28 through 31. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done. Let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Lord Father God, we thank you for bringing us here this morning, this Mother's Day morning. Thank you for letting us see it another day, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just be with each and every one of us as we go through today's service, each hour, each minute, each passing day from now on. We ask that your hand be with us and touch us and guide us. Help us with each and everything that we have to do coming forward this week and moving forward. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us and bringing us here. Thank you for our health, Lord, and our finances, Lord, for all things come from you. So we just ask, Lord, you help us in this hour, be with this service, Lord. And we thank you again for bringing us here and for this Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, like his mother said. I'm a little tired of the crowd, the pastor. Friendship United Methodist Church. Um, I am just so grateful to God for getting us to this point. Um, <laughs> um, it's so much that we can complain about, but yet we are here. Um, God is doing the great and powerful things, and sometimes you got to hit a few bumps to get to where you're going, but trusting that God is able to do exceedingly above all that we can ever ask for now imagine. So I want to thank God right now, not for just what's going on now, but what is yet to come. Amen. So I, I, I'd like to say again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, I think it was appropriate that Sarah found all the mothers' uh, scriptures to make sure that just in case we forgot, we know that. Amen. Um, and with that said, um, not only are we celebrating Mother's Day, but also to remind you that as we uh, show up at church, and for those that are, that are with us online, I was uh, happy to see that the parking lot was kind of full. Um, we, we have people in here who are ready and prepared to serve, uh, serve God. And again, there are people online who is just as equally ready. So we are... Um, looking to see what God has in store for us today. Uh, but not only that, uh, considering that, uh, again, we show up at 11 o'clock, um, if y'all didn't know, we have Sunday school. Amen? Amen. From 9 to 10 a.m., and we have a good time in there, and, and Sunday school isn't just primarily um, friendship folk. These are people from different uh, congregations and walks of life, and we all come together to study God's Word and, again, learn um, as God is calling us to new heights. Because again, we don't want to be stagnant Christians. Amen? Amen. We want to continue to grow in the way that God has called us to grow. Second, we have um, a Wednesday night Bible study. We are in the book of Revelation, uh, where we have the opportunity to see what is yet to come. Um, some people grew up from the uh, perspective that they didn't read Revelation because it was scary. I'll say you should only be scared if you don't know Jesus. <laughs> Otherwise, it is indeed a book of hope. Um, and what is, is what to come, as what is to come, and giving us the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Because, um, as you may know, no day is promised. So one of the things that we learned about in our uh, Sunday school today is never miss out on an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ to whoever you may come in contact with, because you never know what that one gesture, one that. Um, that good word, um, that thought, that action or deed can lead to something greater than we have ever expected. So again, we should not take our salvation for granted, but realize that salvation, salvation is indeed a gift that should be worth sharing 
to those who especially do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen? Um, as a reminder, we have um, our admin council meeting um, next week. And I will let you know at what time um, that we will have that um, a, um, an email or a text will be sent out. And again, to let everybody know, um, especially those who are members of Friendship, you are invited to come. This is not a secret mission. I want everybody to know what's going on. Again, um, you, you see some things that are going on in the back as we're working on our AV system. We got, we got our brothers who are uh, playing and, and, and um, the live music, and, and it's, uh, we bought some new, new stuff. Make sure that online the worship experience is working well. Um, we want you to know what we're doing um, and how we are being um, obedient to what God has called us to do. Again, we want to thank all of those who have prayed for friendship and as well as to uh, their giving and so forth. Because again, it's not always about, um, again, just showing up for service, but it is also to serve. Amen? So with that said, I would like to, um, again, apologize. I uh, Last week, I mentioned that we were going to have um, communion, as you can see from my dress. <laughs> I do not have my communion robe on, but again, it's not that the robe um, uh, makes communion, but just to let you know that we're going to push to next week because I want to make sure that we give all the necessary time uh, and devotion to our mothers on Mother's Day. Amen? Amen. Um, and then lastly... Um, we didn't make the opportunity um, to acknowledge all of our May birthdays. Amen? Yes. So if you're having a birthday in May, we want to make sure that we acknowledge you because, again, birthdays on promise. So anytime you get another one to celebrate, you need to thank God for that. <laughs> so friendship, with that um, said, we're going to uh, lift up all those who are having birthdays in May. And if you are here with us in person, Stand. Stand up. Stand up. Yes. Say it loud. This is my birthday. I'm right. It's a special day. Let us celebrate. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm going to celebrate with you. Happy birthday. So again, just to uh, give our, our birthday shout outs to uh, Sister um, Anna Gray, uh, Miss Lynn, <laughs> Amen. Uh, Sister Tabitha, uh, Miss Darlene, who had a birthday yesterday. And Brother Luz, whose birthday is actually today. Amen. So again, we um, uh, are, are grateful for you all to be here. And I'm ready to get my praise on. All right. So I will now turn over uh, this point of the service to our uh, ministers of music. How's everybody this morning? Did you come to worship the name of God this morning? Did you come to praise the name of the Lord? If you will, stand to your feet and give God a big praise this morning. Come on, we come to give God a big praise this morning. We're celebrating Jesus. We're celebrating God. We're celebrating a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman leads her family with dignity and with integrity. A virtuous woman makes her husband's life better teaches her children and serves God. That's a virtuous woman. Hallelujah. My mother told me no matter what's going on in your life, keep on praising God. Keep on blessing God because God is in control. So this morning, we're going to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is blessing us right now. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, how many know that the Lord is blessing you right now? The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. I say the Lord is 
is blessing me right now. Jesus, who keeps me safe. Hallelujah. How many are glad when they 
open up your refrigerator, there's food in it. When you look in your cabinets, there's food in it. When you look at your children, they're being blessed each and every day. God is blessing them. Hallelujah. We give you honor and glory to God. That's what we do. We glorify the name of the Father because he is so worthy to be praised. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit to commune with us this morning. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit in this morning. And you know what? We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to fill this place. We are the church. God's going to fill it. Fill the temple this morning, Lord. Holy Spirit. Nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Come on, Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're out of the world.
I'm praising my Savior this thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what I would like to say now is the worship doesn't end. We may have sang a few songs, but now is the time for testimony. And it's none other better to give a testimony on Mother's Day. Because your mama <laughs> might need it. <you>. Amen. <laughs> so with that said, I will now turn over this point of the ministry, uh, this point of the service over to our Minister of Testimonies. <laughs> Everybody's dear old Uncle Shirt. Amen. 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 So on, uh, on behalf of Friendship, um, I, I sincerely welcome you. Um, I'll say it. I'm going to say it later. I'm going to say it again. You could have been any other place today. You could have been online, you could have been in another church, but God has ordained you to be here, and we sincerely appreciate it. 
Um, so again, um, we thank you for coming here. Please take our wishes and, and, and prayers back to your church and so forth. And we will look forward to have you coming again. Now we have somebody uh, coming around with uh, uh, something that you probably don't get from other churches. It's coming. So what we're offering you is a gift, uh, letting you know that um, as you are having your coffee in the morning or tea or whatever you put in your coffee cup, um, that you'll be reminded that you do have a friend in friendship. Amen. God bless you. Okay. Oh, sorry. I said that. I, 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 I'm forgetting when, when, I, right. when, when I got things going on. So um, at this point in time, um, Miss Betty uh, requested uh, prayer um, for the Johnson family. And, and I, I, I think that's a blessing that um, the mail carrier can look at you and say, you look like a woman of prayer. Um, that means there's something exuding out of you that people can see that the God is in you. So um, part of friendship is that we do not hinder the opportunity to pray when the Spirit deems so. So we're going to lift up the Johnson family, but also we have those on our prayer list. Um, and again, a friend of mine recently uh, reached out to me this morning, uh, his brother Pat. Um, so we're going to lift him up. But um, if there are others that uh, desire prayer or someone you want us to pray for, um, we're going to read the people on our current prayer list, but um, we don't want to miss the moment. Um, so if there's so if there are people that you want uh, to pray uh, for those of us that are online, you can uh, put it in the chat. But we're going to lift up prayer for um, Sister Margaret Johnson, Brother Charles King, uh, Bonnie and Woody King, the Douglas family, Joan Spencer, Ja'Kai Newman, Patricia King, family of Francis Brown, Donna Drummond, uh, Sister Julie, Brother Tim King, uh, Ray Hobbs Jr., Kevin Cunningham Jr., Erica Brown, Oscar Robinson, Ike Smallwood, Sharon Sewell Jr., Natasha Cunningham, the women of Avery House, uh, Brother Lou Bailey, the Best family, uh, Margaret Brown, uh, William Freeman, Terrell Ballard, uh, Rob Lockhart, uh, Terrence Pinkley and family, as well again, as all those uh, who are with us uh, to continue to lift them up in prayer. Uh, so as we prepare our hearts for prayer, um, I want us to think about um, those who you know in your heart that may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, those um, that may be going through something, that may be struggling. And, and I want to make this clear that everybody in our prayer list doesn't need a friendship. Whosoever desires prayer, we will lift them up in prayer. And the reason why that we put their name in the, on, on the prayer list is that we want to be specific when we pray. That way we give God all the glory, honor, and praise. So when the prayer requests are answered, it's not a generic, well, thank you, God, but thank you, God, for doing X, Y, and Z. So let us pray. Most gracious God, you are indeed so awesome. We thank you for what we have experienced thus far. Lord, we thank you for letting the enemy not get any victory over here right now. We thank you, Lord, that you have deemed so that all of those who are gathered here with us in person, as well as those in the virtual in the virtual realm, are united together as one body in Christ. We have all come together to worship you. Not out of obligation, but simply because you're God and God alone and you deserve it. But we lift up all those who are on our prayer list that uh, may be going through bereavement. But we lift up those who may be uh, going through a period of frustration and, and, and seeking um, answers to questions. Those who may be going through something on their jobs. But we, we don't know all the things that are going on, but you do. But we come to you in prayer because we know that you can do something about it. So, Lord, just as we have already witnessed today, even in this service, let your Holy Spirit move and let your light so shine in us that, Lord, we can uh, proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ wherever we may go. 
We thank you, Lord, for those of us who know you who have placed a light in, in, in our pathway, Lord, that as people come into our presence, Lord, they'll say that there's something different about you, and, and, and I see that you know the Lord I need prayer. Lord, there's somebody here who showed up unexpectedly. They, they, they didn't plan on coming to friendship, Lord, but there was a song, there was a testimony, and there is a word just for them. Speak, Lord, now so that they may hear and receive. Lord, let, let, let somebody who may not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior um, at one point in time, at some point in time, say, Lord, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? There's somebody here who does not have a relationship with you the, the way that they should, they, that they know who you are, but Lord, there is no fellowship. Lord, they haven't prayed in a while. They haven't uh, read their word in a while. Lord, Lord, Lord speak to them and uh, put your arms around them and let them know that you indeed are present and are here. Lord, we pray that you would bless this little church on the side of the road called Friendship where you got to make a quick right or quick left. We ask, Lord, that you would bless all the satellite sites that you have um, uh, that, that have joined with us in, in a number of different uh, states and locations, Lord, that are just as um, involved in the activity and the ministry of this church. Please, Lord, help us all to receive, uh, reach our full potential, what you have called us to do. We pray, Lord, that where we have fallen short, where we have not paid attention to what you've called us to do, Lord, that you would focus us and center us in the, in the direction that you've called us to go. Lord, we are just so grateful for what we have experienced and what is yet to come. Again, Lord, we ask that you lift up all those who have concerns on their hearts, loved ones, most importantly, Lord, on this particular day, Lord, we want to give glory, honor, and thanks to all of our mothers for the dedication, for the, for the love, for the sacrifice. Let them feel your presence. And even for those of us who have lost mothers, Lord, we pray that just because they're not here that we can reflect on the good times. And even if we don't have a good relationship with our mother, Lord, let us be at least have in our heart to honor them just because of who they are. So, Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity of prayer. And that, and that's that you will continue to bless this service. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let the people of God say, Amen. Praise the Lord, friendship. Our tithes and offerings are given in obedience to God and because we are his faithful servants. Malachi 3.10 states that we are to bring the full tithes into God's storehouse. And 2 Corinthians 9.7 states that God loves a cheerful giver. We provide three ways for everyone to give their tithes and offering. You can give online at friendshipmc.org and click on online giving or give by phone by texting the word give to 301-478-8829 or by mail. Send your giving to Friendship United Methodist Church at 27701 Ridge Road, Damascus, Maryland. We pray that our gifts be acceptable in his sight. Lord, we thank you for the tithes and the offerings, Lord. We thank you for the gifts that everyone has brought forth to you, Lord. Lord, we ask you just to use them how you see fit, Lord, in whatever manner you need these tithes and offerings and givings to be used, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for those who were able to give and those who wanted to give in their hearts, Lord, but just couldn't this week, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you continue to make a way out of no way, Lord. Increase those finances, Lord. So they may give as you would call them to do, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity and the ability to give. And we just pray, Lord, you continue to use these in your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Good morning, church. Good morning. I'll be reading the scripture, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And it reads, And a man of the house of Levi went and took his wife, a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she named him Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am poor, I am poor. Come and I know who I am. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am poor, I am poor. And you are my Jesus, you are my And you are my Jesus, 
Savior Jesus the Christ. As always, I am humbled and thankful. Yet another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord just one more time, and I am thankful for God's grace, mercy, and blessings to proclaim the word of God on this 14th day of May, which has been sanctified and set apart to be celebrated as Mother's Day. I also consider it an honor and a blessing to be among the people of God who are with us in person, as well as those who are part of our virtual congregation, of course, always give a love to the YouTube link. Log on later, Craig. <laughs> Again, I want to express my sincerest thanks and greetings to all of you mothers on this very special day. Now, I will not be before you long because I know you have brunch, lunch, and dinner reservations at mom's favorite restaurant. I will not tarry because I know some of you have to go to the store and hope that you will find a relevant Mother's Day card, even if it does not have a matching envelope <laughs> or a bouquet of a, dozen, of a dozen roses, even if they are wilted, if you only count 11. <laughs> I will not belabor this time of preaching because I know you are hoping to catch hustle men on the corner after service <laughs> to get the Mother's Day special gift set that comes with an extra large balloon that says Happy Mother's Day, a giant stuffed animal, a card, a coffee cup, a box of candy, and an oversized t-shirt, and a plant all wrapped together in self and paper. <laughs> Nor will I give you a six-point message on what it means to be a mother by beginning with the letter M and explaining how mothers are magnificent and then finishing with the letter R because all mothers are right. No, today I have what I believe is a simple message of thanksgiving to all the mothers for their love and sacrifice. And as we celebrate and lift up our mothers, it will not be at the expense of denigrating the role or the importance of the fathers. Amen. Can somebody say amen on that word? Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> now I want to begin by making it clear that I am not a mother. Uh, a different time. So, so, so I can tell you about the depth. I can't tell you about the depth of love 
a mother has for her child. I can't tell you how a mother feels or thinks when it comes to caring and protecting her children. I can't tell you how a mother should act, behave, or raise their kids, but I can tell you from experience because I have a mother and I can say with confidence from observation that all mothers are not alike. Mm -hmm. All mothers are not like Carol Brady or Claire Huffman, mm -hmm. June Cleaver, or Florida Evans. <laughs> now while this statement does not apply to your mother, let me know that all mothers are not perfect. Mm -hmm. That's right. Why? Because mothers are different in many ways, especially when considering the broad definition for a mother, simply a female parent and or the woman who gave birth to you. So if we take that broad definition of a mother as a, being a female parent, then it is correct to say all mothers do not have to be physically, does not physically give birth to the children that they parent. Which also means that all mothers may not even be called mother, mom, mama, or mommy. Because if we hold to our overarching definition of a mother, some mothers may be called mama, grandma, godmother, foster mother, auntie Lynn, cousin Donna, or even your older sister, Denise. And then there are the mothers who show up later in life to help raise us like a third grade teacher named Miss Stevens, or the Miss Bettys, Miss Margarets, and the Miss Darlene's we eventually meet and love at the church. And while many mothers physically contribute 50% of their DNA into a child, there are also mothers who contribute 100% of their heart to help us develop and mature physically, spiritually, and professionally. And so today, what I can say with confidence and humility is that all, somebody say all, oh. all of our mothers deserve to be honored because God says so. Amen. And second, because today is Mother's Day. <laughs> Let us pray. Well, gracious God, Lord, we just thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Lord, there is someone who needs to hear a special word from you, and it may not necessarily be a mother. And somebody who may have been hurt. Somebody who's struggling because they lost a mother. Somebody who has been estranged from their mother and they, they're looking for an opportunity to reconnect. So Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will move in the way that the Holy Spirit should move. Sit your servant down and you step forward. That the people not see me, but see you. That the people not hear me, but hear you. And that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. And we thank Sister Nava for reading our scripture coming from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, from the New King James Version. I'm going to read it again simply because I like reading the word. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the word of God says, And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, laid it in the reeds by the river's bank, and his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maids to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she, had the, so she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give your wages. 
So the woman took the child and nursed him, and the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she became, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the war. The word of God, the people of God. If I had to use a title for today's sermon, it would be A Mother's Story. A Mother's Story. Our scripture reading today is coming from the book of Exodus chapter 2, which begins with the generic introduction to a Hebrew family who lived in Egypt. And the members of this family was a sister named Jochebed, who was married to a brother named Amram. And from this union, they had three children, a daughter and the oldest named Miriam, a son named Aaron, and their most recent son named Moses. And some of may be asking, I, Pastor, I, I heard the scripture read, so where do you see the names of these individuals? And I will ask you, fast forward to Exodus 6, which identifies the names of each member of this family. Now, while this may look and sound like the traditional Hebrew family that consists of a mother, a father, and three kids, there was a problem because they lived in the land of Egypt during the time of the pharaoh or king who felt threatened by the growing Hebrew population in Egypt. So he decided to first persecute, oppress, and enslave the Hebrews that it might deter their population. However, the more oppression they received, the more they increased in number and began to and so the king then issued a decree or law that the midwives who assisted with the delivering of the Hebrew babies were to first kill all the male children at birth. Hmm. And when that didn't work, the next decree was for all Hebrew infants to be killed by throwing them into the Nile River to die. Hmm. This was the time frame, the social climate of when Jacob's um, youngest son Moses was born. And the text explains that rather than yield to the law, the land which was to kill their youngest son, Jochebed decided to hide him for three months. And if you read the text carefully and consider how this difficult situation actually affected the entire family, you will notice how the text actually focused on how Jochebed, Moses' mother, dealt with this situation. What we see in the text is Jochebed's story, her story, her story from her perspective because it says that she she hid him for three months. And the reason she was willing to do so was because he was a beautiful child. Now I find this portion of the text interesting because it seems to imply that if Moses was an average or mediocre looking baby, his mother may have complied with the law of the land, but I want to propose that while Moses may have been extremely cute and a sweet baby, there was no way that she was going to let anything happen to her Baby boy, let all the mothers say amen. amen. <laughs> we know that the Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of God, and I would propose that many would agree the next in line to follow is the love that a mother has for her child. However, in Jochebed's refusal to follow the laws of the land, not only was it a threat to her and Moses, but also to the rest of her family. So while there was always an imminent uh, a threat that they would be identified as lawbreakers. After three months, she knew she could no longer hide him, which, as said before, would put the entire family at risk. So what she decided to do Amen. What she decided to do was do something that is uh, oftentimes difficult for many of us to do, especially a mother which is to put complete and utter control and trust in God. See, sometimes despite all of our best wishes, intentions, and plans as parents with, to protect our kids from all of the dangers seen and unseen, we have to be willing to have faith that God loves them more than we do. Oh, that just hurt somebody's feelings right there. <laughs> you know what, let me say that again. Despite all that we do as parents, we need to understand that God actually loves your kids. Your kids, the one that you've uh, worked out nine pounds and whatever ounces and so forth, God loves them more than you do. Okay, okay. And God will protect and provide for all of those who belong to him. And so it was by the same faith outlined 
in Hebrews 11 explaining how by faith Jochebed and Ammon hid their child for three months and were, uh, and were not afraid of the king's command. And by that same faith, Jochebed released her baby boy over to God. And when we get to verse 3, Jochebed trusted God by faith and placed her helpless and beautiful child in a waterproof covered box, which is the same translation for the word used for ark that also protected Noah and his family during the time of the flood. The Bible says that Jochebed put her son in the ark and in the same river where other Hebrew male infants were discarded simply because they were born as Hebrew male children. How hard it had to be for a mother to place her helpless child in a box along the bank of the river, not knowing what may happen to him. But if we keep reading by her releasing her son over to God, it allowed God now to move in the life of her son in a powerful way that she could have, that she could never even imagine. Somebody today needs to know that God will not move until you are ready to release to him what actually belongs to him. Mm. And because Jochebed believed that God would protect him and be faithful to his people, she sat her child along the bank of the Nile River where many other infant Hebrew boys had unfortunately perished. And I believe in that moment, the only thing left for her to do was pray and trust in God. And while Jacob Bear was praying, the Bible said Moses' sister Miriam was watching. I believe Miriam trusted God too, but while mom was praying, Miriam was watching. <laughs> see, see, there's nothing wrong, especially during times when you had given your situation over to God to just watch, wait, and see what happened. I, I, I think Mary had it right because while it makes sense to trust God and believe, part of the belief is to watch with anticipation to see what God will do when, you're when you turn your concerns over to him. I, I like that the Bible says that once her brother, brother was placed along the bank of the Nile, she stood at a distance. <laughs> Coming from Philly, well, you know what that means? That, that's being in the cut. <laughs> she, 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 she was in the cut um, and, 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 and what it was saying is she was looking to see what was going to happen. See, the diagnosis may appear to be bad. There may be a financial struggle or you may find yourself in a tragic situation. But when we are willing to turn it all over to God in faith, we can watch, wait, and see how God will somehow work it out. Work out of the situation for his glory, not your glory. Mm. If I'm in the right church, there will be a time when you are dealing with a problem, a, a predicament, a crisis, or a conundrum that we can't get ourselves out of. And the, the only recourse that we have is to pray and trust and sometimes wait patiently with the expectation to see what God is going to do. See, see, some of us like to watch God from a distance. To see what may happen because we are not sure if things are going to work out right or if things are going to go wrong. But friendship, we should not be fearful and, and hiding while we wait for God to move. But trust and believe that um, um, we'll, when the time is ready and, and when things are about to happen, that we are already ready to testify and give God glory even before we see the outcome of the situation. See, see, what, see, see, what we need to understand is that we're singing the songs about the God that we love and, 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 and Brother Nate and, and, and Brother Victor are getting us excited about this, this God, but sometimes we don't even know the God that we're singing about. See, 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 let me help somebody understand that the God that we're talking about, our God is omniscient. If you don't know what that means, it means he is all-knowing. He's also omnipotent, which means he is all powerful and he's also omnipresent, meaning he is everywhere at the same time. So, 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 so God is right here with us in the same way that he was with all of those with us in the virtual realm and so forth. That, that, oh, that's good news right there. That, that, that makes me want to shout up. Brother Sherman, you might have to open the door so I can do a quick lap around the church. But we should be comforted in knowing. There is nothing. Somebody say nothing. Nothing. Nothing that can or ever will happen outside of the will of God. 
And what this concept illustrates is a theological word called providence. Somebody say providence. Providence. The Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary defines providence as God's benevolent, uh, benevolent and wise superintendence of his creation. But considering there is nothing that can be hidden from God whose power is surpassing great as he wisely oversees and, so and sovereignly controls all creation. In so doing, he attends not only to apparently uh, momentous events and people, but also to those that seem both mundane and trivial. Meaning, God can, God can and will navigate, set up, structure, strategize, facilitate, and maneuver circumstances, great and small, to happen in such a way that his will will always come to pass. Oh, there's somebody to shout right there. When the divine providence of God works in collaboration with a faith-filled, godly mother, the child will be blessed. Amen. And when that happens, the mother can, by faith, let the child go, and God will order the path of the child. See, when you are dealing with a God who possesses these kind of attributes, there is no such thing as luck, chance, or coincidence. Think about it. What are the chances that the location and time Jacob had placed her baby in the Nile River was also around the same time that Pharaoh's childless daughter just so happened to be heading to the Nile River to take a bath? That's called providence. What, 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 what are the chances that as she was preparing for a bath that she noticed the box that was placed along the side of the bank of the river? That's providence. What are the chances that when she opened the box and Moses started crying that she would feel sorry for him knowing that he was clearly a Hebrew baby who was sanctioned by her father to die? That's providence. Well, what are the chances that as Pharaoh's daughter that, that she would even consider adopting this unknown Hebrew boy in a box again considering that her father had mandated that all Hebrew boys should die? That's providence. What, what, what are the chances that as she was making this decision that the sister of the boy in the box just happened to be present and asked her if she needed one of the Hebrew women to nurse the boy in the box that she would adopt as her own son? Providence. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come on. Yeah, yeah. Work with me. What, what are the chances that the sister of the boy who happened to be present when the daughter of Pharaoh who found the baby in the box knew a Hebrew woman who could nurse the child that she wanted to adopt? Problems. What, what are the chances that Pharaoh's daughter who wanted to adopt the boy in the box as her own son and was willing to pay? Somebody say pay. Pay the Hebrew woman um, to nurse her adopted son that just so happened to be the boy's own mother who initially placed her own son by the bank of the Nile River just to get him back and then get paid to nurse her own child that she would have done for free and now without fear. That is Providence. Come on now. <laughs> Don't make me work too hard. But when God is present in the midst of a situation, he can move you from a place of danger and hopelessness to a place of safety, privilege, and prosperity. Why? Because God has a purpose. And while Joker Ben had the opportunity to nurse her own child for what many scholars believe at least three years or more, which are the, 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 the formative years where a mom has the opportunity to bond with her son. I believe during these years, mom taught her son who he was as a Hebrew, regardless of being raised in Egypt. Mom told him about his history and sung him the songs of the Hebrews that only a mom can sing. Come on, brother Victor. She, she, she probably introduced him to food that only a, a Hebrew mom could cook. And, and I believe she prayed with him and over him and told him about the God who delivered him from death. It is during these formative years where the bonding, teaching time, and mama moments are created between a mother and a child, which is integral to the children's development and growth. And I still remember, personally, those bonding moments with my own children. As I watched mom and twins and the next one to follow. <laughs> <laughs> in their late night feeding times and countless cries for attention. I remember my wife teaching our daughters the Lord's Prayer. I remember the countless hours watching them bond as she braided three heads in one day. <laughs> that was a task that as a father I refused to do. 
simply because I don't have the patience to do it. <laughs> but again, if we go back to our text, you can surmise that Joseph Bay of Raised and taught Moses about his history, about his God and his people. And while we celebrate the contributions of Moses' birth mother, Jochebed, we must not forget about Pharaoh's daughter. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we give Pharaoh's daughter much credit in this text, considering she was only mentioned five times in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And out of all those times, her name was never mentioned. Mm -hmm. However, if you, do, if you want to do a study on what was the name of Moses' adopted mother, there are a number of theories regarding whether her name was actually um, Bethiah, Bethiah, that is mentioned in 1 Chronicles 4.18 because it says she was the daughter of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Or was her name Hatshepsut? H-A-T-S-H-E-P-U-T. Mm -hmm. Who, according to some historians, was the daughter of the Pharaoh Thutmose the first, who at who had only one surviving daughter around the estimated time frame of the birth of Moses. Mm -hmm. But regardless of whether her name was um, Hatshepsut or uh, Bethiah, she was in she was integral in helping Moses become who he was destined to be, and she not only made sure he was well educated, but he was raised to be a leader, which would help him later in life to lead the Hebrews out of Egypt and en route to the Promised Land. And the Bible clearly says in verse 10 that Moses became her son, which also meant she became his mother. She made sure he received all the best that Egypt had to offer, including education, prestige, and power. As many historical scholars like Josephus believe Moses was being groomed to be the next king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And again, if we read the text carefully, it was his adopted mother. Uh, I'm just going to go with the, the one with the name that sounds a little bit easier. Bethiah, <laughs> not Jochebed, who gave him the name Moses which literally means drawn out of the water, which is where she found him. It's interesting that this Egyptian woman, who was not a blood relative, but from a different culture background, decided to love him as her own, and as she also received the honor to actually name him Moses, which remained with him throughout the Bible where even God acknowledged him and refer to him by that name. Mm -hmm. And throughout the Bible, it is uh, often observed that the importance of a name oftentimes not only identifies your character, but also provides an insight towards your destiny. The name Moses was given to him for some for someone who was who would be considered the most unlikely mother to adopt her, but adopt um, um, her him as her son, because Moses was a Hebrew who was sentenced to die because he was considered an enemy and threat to her father, the Pharaoh. But God stepped in and placed it in her heart that not only would she save him from certain death, but she, like many other mothers, put her welfare above her child. And she raised him as her own son, despite the objection she probably received from her father and her people. Mm -hmm. Now, at some point in Moses' adult life, you read in Hebrews 11, verse 24, where it says, By faith, when he became of age, referring to Moses, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, mm -hmm. choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoying the passing pleasure of sin, esteeming the reports of, of Christ, uh, uh, of Christ's great, greater riches than the, the treasure in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Now, at first glance, it would seem Moses was rejecting his adoptive mother, but in reality, Moses was not necessarily rejecting her, but rather choosing the people of God and ultimately um, moving in his God-given calling as the emancipator of the Jewish nation over the entrapments of all the sin that Egypt had to offer. And I believe part of the reason Moses was able to choose his destiny wisely was because of the example of his mother, Bethiah. Hmm. Hmm. Because she refused to abide by the law of her father and her people and chose her destiny to become a mother of one of the greatest individuals to walk in. When we think about all the mothers in our lives, whether they are birthed, adopted, or undefined, who parented us throughout our 
uh, uh, repair does throughout or during particular moments of our life. If we try to pay them back for their love and sacrifice, I believe the greatest gift we can ever uh, do and give to our mothers is to fulfill our God-given destiny. Mm -hmm. But if we ask them if they could put a price or even a charge on motherhood, I'm sure they would say, for the nine months I carried you, <laughs> holding you inside of me. No charge. No charge. Oh, yeah, 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 I got that. That's mine. For the nights I sat up with, doctored you and prayed for you, no charge. For the times and the tears and the cost of the years, there is no charge. For the advice and the knowledge and the cost of your college, I'm talking to you. No charge. They said, it's mom, my dad, my charge. <laughs> for the toys, school, and clothes, and for wiping your nose, there's no charge. Because when you add it all up, the real cost of my love is no charge. Somebody say amen. 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 I would hate for us to come to service and have a good time, sing, laugh, pray. Sure that some of us almost cry. Amen. Amen. And I would hate particularly on Mother's Day that if you're here and you do not have a relationship with Jesus of Christ, and you leave this place the same way you came, that would be a tragedy. And if I knew who you were, I would tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> but with all seriousness, uh, it seems as if almost on a weekly basis, I keep hearing about somebody who has gone on the door. Meaning, you can be here today and go on today. Brother Victor said he saw an accident. I, I don't know how the person turned out. But that could have been a tragedy. I would hate for us to be here in the presence of God and hear God speak clearly to us, reminding us that you are not here by accident. No matter if you say, well, my mom made me come. I said I was going to do somebody a favor. My friend, uh, you know, asked me to come and I came. God planned this time and this moment from eternity. That's called providence. So if that is you, you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you want to know the God who is able to do exceedingly above all that you could ever uh, ever ask or imagine. Come while you can. And oftentimes I don't like to rush this moment because I've been in that seat and the enemy is saying, wait till next time. The enemy is saying, Sounds good, but next year, next week, I'll come back and, and I'll listen again. And, and, and if I, and if, if, if brother, brother Nate sing that song like he sang it again, then I'll know that I'm gonna come to Jesus. The enemy is counting on you to delay what God has ordained for you today. So come while you can. Second call. made that quick right and quick left and everything was all right. You made it into this place called friendship. And a lot of us have not been in the church building in a long time. And as you sat here, God is saying, this is where I need you to be. Somebody logged on and said, I, I like what I'm hearing, but I you know, I'm, 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 in, I'm in Pennsylvania, I'm in Delaware, I'm somewhere else. 
God has shown us that he was virtual before virtual was a thing. God can save you whenever and wherever you are. And we have already shown that church is not relegated by the walls of the building. We have active members who live hundreds of miles away as if they were here and they serve God in the same way. If God is calling you to come to be a part of friendship, I would love to uh, be your pastor. Your friendship would love to have you as their brothers and sisters in Christ. And what we intend to do is we're going to hold you accountable. Oh, that's like a bad word of today's time. <laughs> we're going to hold you accountable because we love you. We love you enough that we don't want to see you fall. See, there's a lot of long range of Christians that are going out trying to do it by themselves. And the devil is beating them down, saying, Yeah, you don't need no church. Try to deal with me by yourself. If that is you, don't hinder what the Holy Spirit is saying in this morning. Come while you can. And I'll also say this and continue to say so. Joining friendship is not a lifelong commitment. I'm not going to hold you down until you to sign some papers and say, if you leave, I'm going to pull your credit up and come at you. <laughs> you are here at friendship until God calls you to go somewhere else. And if that is the case, I will help you find another church where God will uh, be able to use you. Because again, it is not about accumulating members, but again, it's accountability. If something is going wrong and, and, and things are so forth, I'm going to pray for you. If you see me acting out of character, I need you. And maybe some of the things that are not happening at friendship now is because you're not here yet. That's a shout out to all the audio visual people who might be in Do not hinder what God is calling you to do. The last call I say is this. If by chance that you were a member of friendship, but we haven't seen you in a while, you kind of show up on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. See you then. And God is saying, I need you to reconnect. Come on back home. We're going to love on you. We're going to be glad you're here. We're going to put you to work. Not because that is something you do, but that is what God requires us to do. So if that is you, first call, looking for a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Second call, you're looking to join friendship. And third call, that you're looking to come back. Come while you can. And again, that call is also for those of us who may be online. Unmute yourself. What we typically do in friendship is when you bring, we bring you in, we pray you in. Because, because we want you to fulfill what God has called you to do in this space and in this place. If that is you, come while you can. Amen. Let us briefly pray. Amen. Pay attention to how we'll do this thing. Well, stretch it down, Lord, we are just so grateful for what we have experienced even now, Lord. We pray that um, the call has gone out, and Lord, that you would stir up the hearts of those who may still be trying to make a decision. Continue to speak and work on them, Lord, giving them the time, the opportunity to come to Christ, whatever call that, that has been offered to them. We thank you, Lord, for what we have experienced this far, thus far, and Lord, we thank you for what you have in store for us to come. Work in us all that you've called us to do. So they may be pleased in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, This is This is when our heart comes to us. This is when we have a great future. God is coming for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. We will not be slaves. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. We say like this: Carrying our burdens, burdening our sin. He has overcome. He has overcome. We will not be slaves. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Hey. I will not I will not I will not I 